Hey guys, well I'm out in the shop today and today we're going to be working on our bearing covers. I've turned a couple of them. I, I need three. Uh, two, one for the X, one for the Z, and an additional one for the Y. Now the Y is going to be cut across right here and have two flats on it. But the piece of stock I had only could give me two. Had I had a long piece of stock, I could have just, you know, turned three and parted them off. But because I had two short pieces, what I'm doing is I'm going to turn it, flip it over, and then turn another piece to get my pieces. And then I'll just cut them with a bandsaw and then put them back in here and clean the back side up. Uh, that way I, I don't have enough room for, on the stock in order to part it. So doing it this way is going to be let me utilize the stock that I already had. Uh, that way I don't have to buy any. Um, first we're going to face it and then we're going to do the profile and then we're going to do the internal profile. Now I went ahead on my manual lathe and I took some of the center out because I haven't done a lot of close tolerance uh, internal boring and so I'm still in the process of learning that and I want to make sure that I got clearance so I went ahead and did that. I've set my Z to the edge of my stock and then I turned I turned a small portion and now I'm fixing to set my X and so I thought I would just kind of show you that how that works with the eye gauging. I have it set on inches make sure it's on inches if you're running Mach 3 in inches you don't want to get the wrong data in there uh, and what I'm going to do hopefully you can see this let me see if I can zoom in I'm going to click on my DRO and highlight it then I'm going to use my calipers to take this measurement and import the data. Okay. 2.2210. I'm going to do it a couple times just to make sure that I've got the right dimension in there from a different angle. Alright, looks like I'm getting the same measurement. So now I have my X0 set and I'm good to go. Makes it real nice, uh, real nice and easy with the um, data input. So I've been using this for about a week now. It's, I've used it a few times. It's, I, really, I really like that. Really easy to set up. Now I have tool number one in here and uh, it's going to be used to part and do the profile and then we're going to use a boring bar uh, that's going to do the internal hole. So let's uh, run the code and see what we have.
I think I I pre bored that hole maybe just a little too much could have let the uh, CNC do a little more but it did touch it just a little bit to clean it up so I think we're okay nice finish and what I'll do is I'll just flip this around and then I'll be able to do the other side then I'll come back and just bandsaw it and then clean this backside edge up um, there's just not enough room for me to safely get my parting tool in here uh this out and we'll split that split that come back and just face that back edge right there uh, and then we'll have two two complete all right okay so now I have my bearing covers made and they'll just fit in there like that they're uh they're snug, but they drop right in. Uh, you really want just this area right here to press down on your two bearings. Remember, you're going to have the spacer in the center. Uh, now we need to mark it to drill our four holes. But before we do that, we need one of them. We need one for the X, one for the Z, but we need one for Y. And the one for the Y, I'm going to just take clamp in the mill. And we're going to just flatten it straight across uh, so that it'll fit between our inch and a half two by four aluminum rectangle tube. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to get that set up in the mill and we'll get one of these flattened off. Okay, so I got my stock in here, got it clamped up, got the depth set. I actually started cutting before I realized I wasn't videoing but I'm just gonna go back and forth and get this down to about an inch and a half so uh, for the total width and that should be good once I get this flat I'll flip it over and I can put that flat on top of this on top of the uh, vice base here and uh, it'll be lined up parallel Okay, that's pretty good, looks pretty good, I'm going to just take a file and uh, chamfer these edges right here and then it should be okay, let me measure this, okay 
Okay, well I've got this marked and uh, we're ready to bore these holes. I just guesstimated where these holes were going to be. Um, if I were to do these in a CNC machine, then I would have, of course, had these holes drilled already. But when you're manually machining, um, I'll drill the bearing cover first and then mark the bearing block and drill and tap those. Uh, you can see that our uh, y-axis bearing cover, see how it's going to look. And remember, it's going to have a 2x4 rectangular tubing go over it. You can kind of see how it's going to go over it. It's got a little little side-to-side -side movement there. So this will be for our Y, and it'll have four holes as well. I'm going to use these little 4mm button head. These are 15 millimeters long. They'll work just fine for this. So I need to go ahead, I'm just going to bore this one and get it for the X and then once we do the bearing block for the Z, I'll bore the second one and when we do the bearing block for the Y, I'll mark and bore it as well. Uh, that way they'll fit. Alright, so we'll, let's go bore these holes now, get set up and we'll bore these holes. All right, well, I've got the bearing cover taped into the x-axis bearing block. I've got it just taped in position because what I'm going to do is I'm going to center drill. I'm going to drill the hole for the threads, and then I'll come back with a bigger bit and just drill through the cover. But that way I get all the holes lined up, and this just taped in place. Uh, it shouldn't move. None of this is real critical as long as this covers for, the, for this uh, particular block. If I were doing this on a CNC machine, then I wouldn't have to worry about alignment. But because you're doing manually machining, you just want to make sure everything lines up. This is just the easiest way to do it. So by taping it in place, I'm assured that the holes will be lined up. So we'll move this into position. And after I had it taped in place, then I went ahead and just with a square just manually mark the center lines. Okay, so now that we have our holes bored, I'm going to take it, uh, take the cover off, and then we'll just tap these holes. So let me get set up and we'll do that. Okay, so I've just got my cordless drill with the M4 by 7 tap, and I'll just put a little tapping fluid on here. And I'll just carefully tap these four holes. I've got the clutch set real low. Alright, I'll just finish up the other two holes and then we'll be done. 
All right, so we now we have it tapped and bolted into place and uh, turned out pretty good. Now that we have our bearing covers made, uh, the y-axis I'll drill into the holes to mount it and the z-axis when we get to those. Uh, so I'll just set these aside for now, but they're done. Uh, one thing I wanted to kind of point out is I did turn these on the G0602, which is, of course, the easiest, uh, most practical way to do it. Uh, if you have a manual lathe, you could very easily turn them on that. Uh, if you do not, it's possible to do this on the Precision Matthews with the boring bar. You'd have to mount it maybe a piece of a square stock or round stock you'd have to mount it and then use the boring bar and turn the bit uh, around so that you can get the steps uh, but it's not the easiest most practical way to do it um, if you only have a precision Matthews and you're following along with this build and you have no way to make these uh, that you can see let me know and maybe I can uh, make you a set of these uh, bearing covers so now that we have the bearing cover made for the x-axis we have our spacer on there you can kind of see how that's all going to kind of come together and then now we just need to work on our stepper mount so that'll be our next video and we'll get started on that please feel free to leave comments and ask questions uh, please subscribe to the YouTube channel by clicking on the link below. Uh, thanks for watching, and most importantly, be safe.